Happy Tuesday, National Champion, Tennessee Volunteers Baseball Team. As John Ward said in 98, as John Wilkerson said last night, your national champions are clad in big orange. I slept on it a little bit. I've thought on it a lot. I've analyzed it. We analyzed it for two hours last night, and I appreciate you guys staying with me. It was pretty cool to analyze it with you. Um, and thank you for staying with me with, with some distractions as well. This is the next day. Your 2024 national champions are the Tennessee Volunteers. Let's go through the big plays in the game. We'll try to get this done and put out real quick. Now, um, if you're in the area, I saw where Tennessee baseball team, they'll have a parade this evening at 615 on Gay Street. And they have a, I think it's a, some kind of a celebration afterward in Market Square. So if you're able to get after that, that'd be pretty cool to make it. I was going to try to drive up for that, but um, I thought it would have been tomorrow or Thursday. But, you know, if you're able to get out, that'd be pretty cool. Get out and celebrate these guys. Definitely deserve it. But six to five, Tennessee wins last night. Of course, it was a nail biter. It came down to the last batter. Of course, the last batter was a tying run at the plate. But Krista Moore leads the game off with a home run. Puts them up one to nothing in the third inning. Chestnut for AM with two strikes. Puts a bunt down. Tennessee makes a throwing error on the play. I think it's one now. If they look back on it, they probably eat that one. But it was a fast runner. You got to think he would have probably been stealing anyway because he stole third uh, a couple pitches later. He was, anyhow, he was able to advance to second on the wild throw, got to third on the stolen base, and then Grahovic was able to drive him in, make it one to one. Got into the bottom of that inning, though. And then you had RBIs. Dylan Drowling had a sack fly. Dean Curley. Had an RBI as well. Big, big night for them. Curly had a good series. I thought two for four again last night. Uh, just going through, I mean, basically, Peebles was the only guy in the lineup who did not have a hit. Other than that, everybody had at least one. And, uh, you know, Moores was big. Billy Amex one home run, I'm gonna, or one hit, excuse me, was possibly the biggest hit of the night in respect because in that seventh inning, three to one, Tennessee needed insurance. Two outs in the inning. Amick gets a base hit off Oshenbeck. Dylan Dryling, next batter, two-run home run. Hunter Inslee, base hit. Kavaris Tears, whole, uh, almost a home run, but Inslee's able to come around. Makes a miraculous slide. Scores. The guy never touched him. Slammed his helmet. Spiked it. Was pretty awesome. That made it 6-1, to one, and that run was huge. But to look back on, none of that happens without Billy Amick's base hit with two outs in that inning. Huge hit, huge hit. I said yesterday on my kind of day of game day primer video, I thought Amick was going to have a huge game. Uh, one for four, I wouldn't say it's huge, but that one hit was absolutely humongous. He come through in the biggest of times when that team needed it. Um, A&M, of course, was able to get it back to in the night, six to five. Another play to me that was huge, underrated, and not talked about enough was in the eighth inning, when Vitello had brought Dylan Loy, I think it was when he brought Loy in. But anyhow, he subbed out Dean Curley and brought in Ariel and Tigo at shortstop. Curley had had a play earlier in the game. I think the ball just kind of climbed up the glove a little bit on him. But he was able to somehow get the four. Should have been an easy double play. It wasn't. Um, but Tony pulled Curley, put in Tigo at shortstop. Like I said, this play is not talked about enough. Ball's hitting the hole, runner on second. Depending on where Curley's at, I think there's a possibility that ball gets into left field. And with Dylan Drowling, he doesn't have the strongest arm that there is. That could have possibly been a run. And Tigua stops that ball, makes a heck of a play to first, makes it somewhat close, even though, I mean, there was no doubt the guy was safe, but he made it a lot closer than I ever thought it would have be. been. And announcers were kind of wondering why the guy on second didn't advance to third. I think in that situation, Based on where Antigua's momentum was going, he could have thrown the third and gotten that guy out. The guy made the right move on it. But that play was huge. It saved a run, which we needed in that ninth inning, for sure. I mean, Xander Seacrest cannot say enough about him again. With it on the line, I mean, he come through again last night. Uh, got the win to go to six and one, five and a third, six hits, one run, which was earned, one walk, seven strikeouts. Just uh, another excellent outing. Sneed went one and two-thirds, two hits, one run, which was earned a walk and a strikeout. 
Loy went a third of an inning, two hits. Only was charged with one earned run, but he did surrender the inherited run from Snead. Cannell, two-thirds, one hit, no runs, two strikeouts. And then Aaron Combs in the ninth, one inning, two hits, two earned runs, three strikeouts, uh, got to strike out that ended the game on it. Um, persevered, come through. They did, they did Tennessee baseball. This is the greatest team in SEC baseball history. The only team to ever win 60 games in a season. They're the greatest. There is, all these other teams can say what they want to. This is officially the greatest single season team in SEC history at 60 wins. Passing good old Vanderbilt, the old Vandy boys there. So yeah, this team is the greatest. They staked their claim last night. Now, the worry, you know, people freaking out yesterday with Texas uh, getting rid of their head coach. I, I think it's a matter of when, not if, Tony Vitello, an extension and a raise is announced for him. Probably be sometime this week, I would imagine. So I, I would not freak out on that. There is absolutely nowhere or no reason for him to go anywhere else right now. He has everything in Knoxville. He has the national champions. He has the winning this program over the last four years. They're putting big time upgrades and renovations into the stadium. They're giving him everything he needs down there. Tony Vitello is going to be here for a while. You know, the, the focus next will be to the portal and then the MLB draft, which comes up here in a couple of weeks. You know, how many losses they have. And then this team does withstand to lose quite a bit. But in the meantime, enjoy his team. Enjoy for what they did this year. Enjoy them that they didn't quit. They didn't quit in game one of the College World Series when down five against Florida State. They didn't quit when they got down one to nothing in this championship series against Texas A&M. They kept fighting. They kept going through. C is your national champions. And we'll wrap up on that one. Uh, thank you again. Thank you guys for tuning in last night, for staying with me for two hours. A lot of you were with me for two hours. I appreciate a lot of your generosity. Um, we had a little bit of issues last night, you know. They, I'll just tell you, they've been addressed behind the scenes. They should have never come out anyway. Um, they're handled. They, there shouldn't be an issue. Moving. I'm not talking big and bad enough. They just pieces have been said. They're done. Um, should have never been. That should have never happened last night. But um, I'm actually proud I did not engage that. It got engaged this morning, though. So we'll move on. We'll move on with it. Um, you know. I do. I started this channel because I wanted to cover baseball. I wanted to cover basketball. All right. That's my goal. My goal is to one day be in Omaha with these Vols covering it. Will I ever get that? I don't know. But, you know, you got to start out trying. Okay. You got to try on it. Sometimes you got to go your own way. It's nothing against anybody else. What I've done, I've not done shows in over two years prior to this. It had been literally over two years since I had done shows when I started my channel. Um, you know, that's, I have my goals. I have my things I want to do. I have a right to do that. I, it's it's nothing against anybody else. It's, there's enough to eat for everyone on it. Um, it is what it is, all right? It is what it is. This thing's going to keep on rocking and rolling. We're going to be classy about it as well. Um, you know, sometimes I, I guess I get a little childish, maybe a little bit last night with the, the language and the excitement, but uh you know, overall, we're going to try to keep this thing good. We'll tell it like it is, but we're also going to keep it about this channel. We're going to keep it about Tennessee athletics because that's why I'm doing this. It's about Tennessee athletics. It's not about me or one else that's out here. And, um, you know, if you are interested in being a moderator for the live chats when we do it, you can leave me a message on here or contact me, the orange swarm 10 at gmail.com uh, and just kind of, you know, make, make mention of it and we'll go from there with it. But, um, you know, I just want to address that a little bit. It, it ain't going to be a problem moving forward. I can promise you that. Okay. We're going to be adults on this show and act like that <laughs> for the most part. Um, but my name is Frank Rock, House of Orange Sports Channel. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Make sure you like, you subscribe to the channel if you have not already for updates. Make sure you share it out. That, that's how we get out here the biggest it is. This thing's still growing a lot. It's going to keep going moving forward. Thank you. Have a great day. And last but most certainly not least, 
Go Vols. Maybe. Let me here. Here we go. Uh, and let's just say, yeah, your national champions are clad big orange. Go Vols. Thank <laughs> you.